Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Welcome to another Python video. And this time around, I want to show you inheritance. This video is actually going to be heavily dependent on you having already watched the previous video where I showed you how to create classes. So if you haven't already done that, I highly recommend that you do watch that video. Even if you already have a general idea of classes and you think you're ready, uh, the theme in this video continues from the last one where we were doing a video game theme that I thought would be fun. The theme of this series is actually system administration, but this is just a temporary thing. And because what I'm going to be doing in this video is applying inheritance to the scripts that we wrote in the previous one. And then in the next video, we'll get back to our system administration theme. So let's go ahead and dive into inheritance. So here on my screen, we have the most recent example of the ones we went over in the previous video. I mentioned in the previous video that this wasn't a great example because there's all kinds of room for improvement. Things are, in, are repeated and the code could be cleaned up. It's just messy. I know all of that. So um, I definitely understand that there's a lot of room for improvement. And inheritance is actually something that we can utilize here that's going to help us improve this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this program and I'm going to include inheritance. So I will be right back. So here I have another script that I created as a copy of the original. Now I'm using Vim and I can basically flip back and forth between the two files because I have them both open. So BP is buffer previous. I can go back to the previous file and then I can do colon BN for next, so buffer next and go to the new one. This isn't a tutorial on Vim. I just wanted you to understand what I'm doing. But in your case, you could probably have both scripts open in whatever text editor you want to use. It doesn't matter if you're using Nano or what have you, but just so you are not confused by what I'm actually doing here. So this is the first example of inheritance, which is basically the original script copied, but then changed. Now in the previous script, you can see one of the biggest problems here is I'm creating two classes and they're essentially exactly the same. Class game character and class game enemy in their constructor are both creating self.name and self.life. These two lines are repeated in both classes. That's completely unnecessary. And then it's also unnecessary that they all or each have their own attack function. They each have their own life check function. So essentially, these two classes are the same, and the difference here is the attack. So notice here that in the first class, game character, its attack function is saying that it kicks the enemy. And then in game enemy, in this class, its attack function says attacks the heroes. It's really the only difference, and it's just not worth having two classes for just one difference. So let's look at that first. So I'll go to the new script. And we can see that I cleaned it up a little bit here. So I created a class called game character, it's the same name as before, but it only has a constructor and all it's doing is just initializing self.name and self.life. It's doing nothing but just storing those fields. But then I created two additional classes here, player and enemy. Now you notice here, player is inheriting from game character. So game character, it's not a coincidence that I have game character here in the parentheses and the first class is also called game character. That means that anything that the game character class has, an instance of class player will also have. So even though I didn't, I didn't identify self.name and self.life, class player, if you create an object from that class, is always going to get those two things or anything else that I put here as well. So this basically means that all game characters are, getting, are going to get self.name and self.life. So player and enemy will also get those things, but then each have their own additional function here, def attack, and then def attack again. I know I'm repeating myself and, and there's you know two functions that are essentially the same, but this is still a lot better than the previous one. I mean, just look at it. It's a lot less code 
for pretty much the same thing. I didn't have to repeat myself. Now, again, there's some features that are missing here too, so that's another reason why the code is, is simpler. But you do get the idea that having inheritance actually allows us to be able to write cleaner code. So I'm gonna scroll down here. And now what the program is going to do is create an instance of the player class and an instance of the enemy class. Now, this is actually going to mean that these fields are required. Even though they're not listed here in the subclasses, they are required. So name and life, as defined here, needs to be provided. So I, I'm creating Mario and Bowser with 100 and 150 life on them. So uh, scrolling down here, it's going to print. Simple print statements, kind of like we did in the last video. It prints player one dot name and life, same with enemy one. But then it's also going to call the attack. So it's gonna call the attack function of the player one object, as well as the enemy one has its own attack and that's going to be called here as well, which means that enemy one is created as an instance of the enemy class, it has its own attack, so that's what's going to be called here. It's going to say breathes fire player one dot attack. If that's called, we'll say kicks the enemy. So that's a pretty simple example. Let's see it in action. I named mine inheritance one dot py. Let's see if it works. So it's just printing the fields for each object, as you already know. And then it's calling the attack function of each of the two objects. And, um, you know, I've already gone over the program, so you should probably understand exactly how this works and how I was able to do that. But if, you, if there's anything you don't understand, just take another look. I think that this program is pretty self-explanatory and you want to make sure that you understand this basic concept of inheritance before we go further. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another example. So go ahead and pause the video if you need a little bit more time understanding exactly what's happening here. So here I have another example of inheritance. And I'm adding back a feature from the previous video that was removed in the first example in this video, which was the life check. It basically is just checking whether or not that instance of that object has less than or equal to zero in regards to health or life, and then just prints accordingly. But I've also created a new function down here, function fight, which basically I am incorporating a battle system rather than just line by line playing out the battle. I am essentially creating a fight function that I can call and I can basically set a target. I can set the damage and basically set those here when it's called and then have the damage or the battle play out. First of all, it's going to just print a couple new lines because I want some space in between each round of the battle. And then it's going to call character attack right here. And here we have character is declared, so we need to provide that as an argument. So let me go ahead and scroll it down a bit here. So here I'm calling the fight function, which I defined here. And for the character argument, I'm giving it player one. So player one was created here as an object of the player class. Enemy one was created as an object of the enemy class. So for the first field, player one, I am basically just setting it equal to this. And then the target, I have to define a target. So character here needs to attack something. Who's the target? The target in this case is enemy one. I need to clarify the damage as well. How much damage will that object take? It's gonna take 50. Then I'm going to call fight again, so the enemy is going to counterattack, and then it just basically flips this. So whereas player one was the character and enemy one was a target, now enemy one is a character and player one is the target, and then I declare the damage straight through. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Let's see how this works. I called my script inheritance two. I'll press enter, and we can see that it's a little bit more interesting now. So round one, Mario is attacking. Attacking Bowser, Bowser takes 50 damage. Bowser now has life, 100 life remaining, but Bowser's still in the fight because it, you know he has life remaining. Bowser counterattacks, Mario takes 20 damage, now he's down to 80. Scrolling down here to the bottom, all the way to the end, uh, Mario kicks the enemy, so you know that's quite a kick, 70 damage. Bowser now has zero life remaining, now Bowser's defeated. Go ahead and bring back the program just to make sure we understand what's, what's actually happening here. Go back to the beginning. 
So, as I mentioned, we have the game character class, and it takes name and life right here that need to be provided, and it's basically creating its own instance variables here that are equal to whatever's entered in name and life. We could define those fields any way we'd wish to. Game character has a life check. It's going to be self. So basically, this, is, this life check is exclusive to itself or its own instance of that class. If you didn't do this, if it even ran at all, then each object wouldn't have their own life check. They'd have a life check. It wouldn't work at all. So basically, we need to use self to clarify that this life check is exclusive to this creation of an object this specific implementation, and it's not a program-wide thing. This is per instance here. And life check is just simply running an if statement to see if its, its implementation of life, self.life, is less than or equal to zero, printing accordingly. I'm creating two more classes here. And every class needs name and life. And every class needs life check, but I didn't want to have to write that every single time. So class player and class enemy inherit game character, which means they get all this. So player gets all this, enemy gets all of that. I don't need to define all that again. They just grab all this information and make it part of their own. But in addition to that, they each have a function that's exclusive to them called attack. And they're called the same thing here, but they basically have their own attack function that is slightly different in each case. And then here toward the bottom, I create a function which is basically taking arguments, the character, the target, and the damage that allows us to have a round of fighting off of one function. We can have however many rounds of attack in this um, perceived game, and then the damage can play out. And then I initialize the objects, and then I just create some instances here. I, I just basically call the fight function multiple times with multiple different uh, variations here. So player one is, at is attacking enemy one, and then on from there. So that pretty much concludes this temporary game theme. I just wanted to make sure that I was able to explain the components of inheritance as well as classes. And it was a very important concept. It's one of the things that you really want to, want to pay special attention to. If you have any doubts about your understanding here, Go through the previous video again, return to this one, work through the examples. I think you can get it, and um, I'm sure you probably already got it. And uh, hopefully these examples explained it clearly because it's definitely a very tricky concept to explain. Object-oriented programming taught, you know, took me quite a while to actually wrap my head around it early in my career. But you know, some, some things are easier to learn than others. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into object-oriented programming in this series. I just wanted to show you guys uh, some basic examples so you can understand that. And then from here, you can uh, further educate yourself on object-oriented programming. But I think that these are the concepts that are most important to know. In the next video, though, we are going to return to the system administration theme. And what I'm going to show you how to do is actually create your own Linux instances with Python using a cloud provider. So this is going to be awesome. I'm excited for this one. I will see you in that video as soon as I have it uploaded. Check that one out and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.